everybody, my name is Angie. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I am going to do a, a sewing room tour slash sewing room organization tips, you know, just what I do. Um, any of you who have been around for a while, last summer my sewing room flooded. It was in our basement. So we made the decision to use um, move my sewing room upstairs into one of the bedrooms. So it's a little bit of a smaller space, but now I have a closet. So I did have to change up some of my organization and it's still kind of uh, evolving. Um, yeah, it's not set yet, but this is what I'm doing right now. So maybe you can get some tips for your sewing room. Um, if you don't have a huge space, I mean, I do have a bedroom, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but if you don't have a, a massive room for your sewing room and you have a lot of stuff, maybe you can find some helpful tips um, in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I have, I'll just kind of go in a circle around the room. Um, so I have a bunch of these little containers here. So this is just a little two tier one. And this top drawer is just um, all of my smaller pieces of interfacing. It's not all of my interfacing, but um, like fusible fleece. And I have, oh, uh, I think our bed sheets came in this, but I just use it as a zipper bag. And I keep um, a lot of my interfacing in here. This is just a bunch of random one-off um, different types of interfacing that I bought. And I keep it for the most part all in here. And it just kind of keeps it tucked away but close by to my sewing machine. This is my desk right here for my sewing machine. So it's, you know, close by. And then down in here, I have some of my zippers, like my number three zippers and my non zipper by the yard. Um, I just, this one um, was a bulk order. I think most of these came from uh, Lauren Mormino. She was destatching a bunch of zippers. So um, they just came in this plastic bag. So I kept them in there. And then some more number three zippers here. And I always have a lint roller nearby. Um, I've been trying to do a better job of keeping my dogs out of my sewing room, but that's just, it's just not feasible in this house. And I have dogs in the house, so there's dog hair in the air. So lint roller is a must. Um, and for anybody wondering, I do sell on Etsy, but I do disclose on my Etsy shop that, um, you know, dogs might be coming into contact with stuff. So, um, and then I have some of these containers here. So this is for my hardware. Um, so in this one here, I have, um, I don't have much rainbow, but I have just a little bit of rainbow in this one here. And then the rest is all silver and I just kind of have it all, um, you know, organized into like here are my one inch adjust, uh, slide adjusters, one inch swivel hooks and D-rings, just kind of all organized that way. And then this one is same kind of thing, but I have my antique gold and my black nickel. Um, so those are the three that I use most often. Uh, so that's what I try and keep a stock of. And, um, I'll link below like who I use for hardware. Um, some of this came from Amazon. Um, if I'm getting uh, bulk orders, um, like for the um, the Brandy crossbody bag, one of my patterns, I make a lot of those. So I do get the hardware for that in um, bulk on Amazon usually. But for a lot of my other hardware, I either get it from uh, Mormino, Lauren Mormino, or My Handmade Space, but I will link those below. And then I have another one in here that has a little bit more hardware and my um, like sew-in fabric tags um, and just some other random pieces. And here, um, another thing that I like to do is just keep, these are little pieces of Decoville Heavy and I just keep all the tiny little like spare pieces of the Heavy. Um, actually, I have a few that I need to shove in here. Uh, I just keep them in here and I have it kind of checked out in one inch pieces on this piece here. And I use this on the back of like purse feet or um, like uh, magnetic snaps. If they don't come with uh, washers, then I'll use that as the washer for it. So I just kind of have it like that. 
And then this one has two layers. And this is all of my uh, zipper pulls for my zipper by the yard. And again, I have a, a little bit of black nickel, but mainly just silver and um, the antique gold or bronze, whatever you want to call it. So those are the ones that I use the most. So this is not in my sewing room. I had to move it into another room because I didn't have a door to hang it on. But this is all of my zipper by the yard. And I just went on Amazon and got a shoe rack. Um, I will tell you, any of the storage ideas that you see in this video, I cannot take credit for them. I have seen them done by other people, and this is definitely something that other people are doing. So, not my idea, but this is just what I'm doing. So then moving over to the left, I have my uh, sewing desk. So this is just a, you know, normal office desk um, that I am using as a sewing def desk with my Juki and a sneak peek at a pattern I'm working on over here. Um, and it has a nice big drawer here that I keep a decent amount of stuff in. So I went and got some of these little storage things um, for a little bit and they're grippy on the bottom so they don't slide too much, um, but just kind of the stuff that I need um, quickly uh, to be able to grab. So all my pens and marking tools, um, this is just fasteners and a uh, flashlight because I don't know you never know if the power is going to go out uh, lighters I use those pretty frequently and my thread zapper which the battery's dead on uh, so I got to replace the battery on that some clips headphones pins scissor sharpeners that don't really work the greatest uh, bobbins uh, multiple seam rippers um what is this Oh yeah, this is uh, rotary blades. So I keep my rotary blades in there. And then all the zippers, or that, that's not zippers. Nope, that's the wrong word. Scissors, all of the zippers. No, I did it again. Scissors, scissors. Yeah, um, my brain's not working today. That's fun. Uh, and then a measuring tape and some of my sewing machine tools um, like to unscrew and clean and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and here are just a few things that I like to use when I'm staging pictures, like for my Etsy shop, uh, like a little makeup brush and hand sanitizer so that people can gauge the sizing on things. So, yeah. So then down here is mini disaster pile number one. Um, this is just scrap fabric that I need to do something with that I haven't yet. And my um, rivet press. This is different uh, sewing machine feet that I keep in a little jar, handy, um, and my trash. And this is a squeaker that came out of my dog's toys that they pulled apart that I have planned to one day make this into a toy for them again, but that's been sitting there for like, you know, a year. So yeah, fun times. So then this is the side of an Ikea shelf um, that I have all my fabric stored on, um, but I just put some dry erase boards right here so I can, you know, make notes, make a list of things that I want to work on, um, you know, whatever I feel like putting there. Um, this is just a little plastic thing of a half inch wristlet. Oh, that's not in view. A half inch wristlet and a D-ring, like a half inch D-ring piece or zipper tabs. These are pieces that I use pretty frequently, so I just keep them right there. It's my like, little template. And then one of my thread racks. Uh, so this is mainly my 100% um, cotton uh, thread up here. And then, I don't even know, random different types of thread that I never actually use. All right, so there's a lot going on over here more disaster piles. Um, if you don't have disaster piles in your sewing room, I can't relate. Um, so this is all, this is a Ikea bookshelf. I think it's the Calyx is the name of it, something like that. Um, but I have um, all of the fabric stored, or most of it, on these little comic book boards. Um, so it's just a little cardboard piece and it's supposed to be like slid into a comic book to keep it standing upright but it's pretty perfect for uh, fabric so just wrap it around it 
I think I have a video. I will link the video. I'm pretty sure I have a video on how to, I store all of this. Um, so I will link that also in the description box below. Uh, but then I also have random pieces because this thing is pretty full and I don't have room because I have a fabric buying problem. Yeah, anyways, more fabric that I just bought at a local quilt shop that I need to put away. And again, disaster pile. Most of it is minky fabric, like scraps of minky that I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with. And so it's sitting there so that I don't tuck it away in a cabinet or in somewhere else and forget about its existence for another two years like I did before. Um, more thread. It's all the like polyester thread. Uh, my brother sewing machine and embroidery machine. My brother serger. And then moving over here, I have, this is another shelf from Ikea. And um, this is, again, just kind of disaster. Um, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Um, so this is just um, these little containers. Um, I think they're like for photos, like a four by six photo. I got it at Michael's. Michael's. Um, but I put little pieces in here. Again, saw this on another creator's uh, channel, but I use it for hardware. Like I cut out, if I'm cutting out multiple bags at a time or something, I can go and put um, the hardware that I need in here. That way I don't lose it, but I have it set aside. Um, and then these are my like actual printed patterns, things that I want to try, like this dress that I bought forever ago. I'm not a dress person, but for whatever reason, I decided to buy a dress pattern and I'm scared to try it. So yeah, um, this is my bowl cozy shelf. So all of this is planned to become bowl cozies at some point. It's been sitting there for about a year. Every once in a while, I'll grab a piece and work on it. And it's usually about like four to six or more, maybe. Uh, bowl cozies that I can get out of one piece so every once in a while I'll go and grab them. Christmas time is a big seller for bowl cozies for me so I try and do that, um, space it out throughout the year. Uh, a couple different pro projects that I need to work on. Um, the fabric for said dress that again I don't know when I'll actually attempt that. Um, down here is some more projects. I have a couple of like quilts cut out that I need to do something with. Um, a million, these are all of my trials when I was creating the uh, penny clutch. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do with those because some of them are not great. None of them are really like selling quality because I was still working the kinks out of them. So I might just donate them or something like that. There's a little things off here and there with them, but, um, more fabric for a dress. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then this is all my pre-cuts, uh, fat quarters, some jelly rolls, some panels, um, just a little bit of pre-cuts. And then this is some of the like minky fabric, um, and bigger cuts that won't fit over here that I need to figure out what to do with. And then my heat press. So that is, this is the majority of my sewing room and how I keep things. I say organized, but then you can see that that's not really the case, but yeah, so that's here. Um, so then over, moving over, that was the bookshelf we were just looking at. I have my ironing board here. Usually one end of it is piled high with stuff, another disaster pile. Uh, this happens to be tons and tons of things that I need to take pictures of and actually get listed in my Etsy shop. And they've been sitting for months and I just want to sew. I don't like taking pictures of things, but that happens when you have an Etsy shop. So I need to do that at some point. So that's what most of this is. Um, along with recent YouTube video that deciding what to do with if I want to list it in my Etsy shop or if I just want to keep it for myself because it's a cute little thing. 
And then this thing here is my uh, super janky makeshift uh, photo box or light box, that's what they call them, light box that I made because I didn't want to buy one. And this paired with the Lightroom app works decently for uh, taking pictures for, um, you know, selling items. Uh, it's not great, and I always think about replacing it with a, like, real light box, but it works. This paired with a couple of lamps on either side works for the most part. And then, working my way over to the closet over here, um, this is where I store all of my, or most of my, um, like, made items that are listed in my Etsy shop. Um, I'm not big on, I do custom orders, but I get kind of stressed out doing those. So I mainly just make what I like to make and list it and cross my fingers and hope it sells. Uh, so that is what most of this is. I think one of the bins is more minky fabric that I need to make stuff with. Um, as well as all of my um, scrap fabric up here. Um, so I do have another video showing how I organize all of this stuff. Um, so I'll link that in the description box below as well. Um, and then I have some batting up here, uh, mainly the, um, what's it called? Wrap and uh, Zap for bowl cozies, 100% cotton. Uh, so I keep that up here. Um, I'm not sure what to do with this, but this one here is uh, vinyl rolls, um, I think. All of these are ones that I got from my punk broidery recently, and they're adorable, and I need to use them, and I don't know what to make, but yeah, so that is that. And I also have in here a big old plastic baggie of um, sewing patterns. So these are the paper versions of patterns. Um, I also have, oh, I didn't show over here. Um, I keep a little zipper pouch thing. Um, this was, it was supposed to be a laptop bag that I made a while back and it was too small cause I measured wrong and didn't fit the laptop. I did make one for a YouTube video that actually fit the laptop, but this was my spare. So in this one, I keep my, um, like plastic patterns. Um, so these are like my little templates that I use. So like, you know, the car trash can. And that is what I keep in this one. This is kind of like my working stash because I can trace these a little bit easier than a piece of paper. Uh, so I keep these over here, but then the actual paper ones I keep here. That way if there's ever a time where I, you know, break one of the plastic pieces, uh, pattern pieces. Um, I, I have it, I don't have to reprint everything. Um, and then more plastic storage containers. So this one is like needles, bobbins for my brother sewing machine. Um, more like some of my other rulers that I have. Um, and other like Oh, what do I keep in here? I don't even know. Um, like my manual for my sewing machines, stuff like that, I keep in here too. And then down here is some other, like I keep webbing, um, like what is this stuff for um, piping, which I never actually use. I think I was gifted most of this. Um, lots and lots of like cording. Um, I, I was gifted a lot of it and um, I don't know what to do with it. So if you have ideas for cording like that, let me know. Um, as well as um, Velcro, keep Velcro in here too. And then this one here is for the most part, uh, this is my cheap fabric that I got either on clearance or like a super, super cheap remnant um, that I got from um, Joann's. And this is what I try and use up when I am trying, like when I'm making a new pattern that I am going to be selling. Um, 
you know, before I get all the kinks out, make sure I measure correctly and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to use any good fabric that I paid a lot of money for when I don't know if it's going to work out. So that's where this stuff comes in. So this is a remnant roll of vinyl that I got. It was remnant and it was on clearance or something like that. So it was like ridiculously cheap and same with all of these. So I paid hardly anything for any of these. And I don't care if I screw it up and don't measure something correctly when I'm trying out a new pattern. And that goes for like actually trying out a new pattern that somebody else wrote that I'm trying for the first time also. Um, if it's got a new technique to it or something like that. It's just helpful to use like in garment sewing, I think they call it like a muslin um, that you would make like as a trial uh, to get the fit right. So that's kind of like my muslin. Uh, and then this bottom shelf is full of, I'm not even, I can't even open it, it's too heavy. Uh, it's full of quilts that I have cut out. They're in varying stages. Some of them are an actual quilt top. Some of them are just the squares. I need to do something with them at some point. Um, and then this side, uh, more totes of um you know things that i have made um as well as the oh more minky fabric up top here um the cow fabric uh the minky infinity scarf again i have a youtube video for that um, but the cow has been a very big seller for me the last couple of years so huh. i'm real clumsy uh so yeah I get a big huge amount of it and again throughout the year I will just make a couple here and there. Um, so I said at the beginning of the video I keep a good amount of my interfacing over here. I keep the rest of it over here. So these are like the bolts that I have. So I use a lot of SF 101. So I usually um, there's a couple of times where they gave me like an actual bolt of it because I took the entire bolt um, or what was left on it. So anytime I buy it now, I just wrap it right back up on this and it stores a lot easier. Same with foam and Decoville, stuff like that. And then big vinyl rolls back in the corner over here. Um, this is my embroidery stash. Um, anything embroidery, like the interfacing or stabilizer that I use for it. Um, and then that is think I don't even know what's in it I think that's um, old jeans that I'm working on upcycling as well as other clothes that I need to work on upcycling um, or fix or otherwise um yeah oh last thing but that is all of my sewing room I got one more thing so then this is the rest of my vinyl so this is a um, vinyl storage over the door hanger thing. I don't know what it's called. Um, but again, got it on Amazon. Um, again, not my idea, but it's pretty great. Other than the fact that I always have my door closed, so then I still forget about it. But um, it is just nice to have so that it keeps all of the vinyl like right there where I can see it. Um, it isn't that. This particular one that I bought didn't have a weight listed on it, like a weight limit. And um, if you are getting it, just keep in mind, uh, it's actually two-sided, so it has these rolls on the other side of it too, but there's no way that it could fit all of this. Um, it actually, when I first hung it up the first time, it started bending the hangers up top uh, just because it is made for like heat transfer vinyl, like for crickets and stuff. And this is, that, that stuff is way lighter than like fabric vinyl. Um, so, it is super helpful, but it says that it can fit like 60 rolls and that's obviously not the case. I do have two extra spaces down on the bottom here. Oh, maybe three. Yeah, three spaces on here, but nowhere near 60 pieces of vinyl on this. But it is still nice to have. Keeps everything all nice and pretty on here. Um, but yeah, so that is, I think that is everything. All right, well, that is my sewing room and how I organize everything. Obviously, I still have a lot of room for improvement with my 
several disaster zones that I need to work on. Um, but yeah, so that is how I organize everything. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful in some way. Um, there's, you know, maybe some piece of what I'm doing that uh, you might benefit from doing. Uh, if you do anything differently, uh, if you like what I'm doing, give me a comment down below and let me know. And, um, you know, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. I'll see you next time. Bye!